little tractor that does. Uh, yes, yesterday was uh, get the feed day. The feed trailer. Well, evidently, I I couldn't go get the feed yesterday. That's why I'm moving things today. Uh, I got a pig out. I don't know if you can see her up there, that white dot. Anyway, we're going to fix that. But, I couldn't get, we needed feed yesterday. And I'm limited on the times that I can buy bulk feed or pick it up. I can buy it anytime, but they mix it special. And you have to make an appointment to get it and all that. So, and they only have certain times that they'll do that. Well, during the week, on the weekend, it's not quite as bad, but you got to get there Saturday morning. But anyhow, Rhonda and the number one farmhand had to go get it last night. So, they couldn't get the tractor to start last night. Ethan couldn't. Farm man. So, they didn't get it put back here where it belongs. Hold up a second. Okay, well, shoot, I don't know, I've been recording two minutes here, I don't know. Okay, well, I'm off of the tractor. I'm going to have to look at this video and see what I've recorded and what I haven't. Okay, we're starting this video all over again. Of course, you don't know that, but anyway, you can hear the little tractor in the background here, I guess. Uh... Yesterday we needed feed. We were out of feed. And I try, me and the number one farmhand, try to time it so that we get it on Saturday morning because my work schedule. But it just didn't work out that way. So, uh, the pig wrangler extraordinaire had to go get feed last night when she got done working. So they took the trailer and uh, I got a hundred things running through my mind all at once. But they took the trailer and went and picked the feed up last night. Uh, so they got back home and Eason could get the tractor started. That's the number one farm hand if anybody doesn't know. Okay, well, but anyway, they couldn't get the tractor started to move it back here where it belongs. And it's so wet, we don't want to be driving the truck around back here. Plus, it's a little tighter than I would like. But anyway, so had to fire up the little tractor that does and move it. And on my way back here, I saw that. You see that big old white? hunk of thing out there yeah that's our youngest guilt she's decided that she likes to get out of the pen she mostly stays back here but we're gonna have to figure out how to deter her from that Watch this. Nope, she's not going to do it. Come on, Opal. Come on, let's put her in. Get down. Come on. Go on. Let's see if I can get her to walk back in. Come here, Opal. Come over here. Go on. Come on, girl. 
Go on. I gotta convince her that she wants to go that way. Come on, let's go. Come on, good job, Opal. Good job, girl. Come on, let's go. Of course, she's got better footing than me. Come on, let's go. Come on, Opal. Oh, good job. Good job, Opal. Good girl. Come on, Opal. Come on, let's put her in. Good job, good girl. Come on, good girl. Come on, get her, go. Opal wants to, but she's not sure what to do. Come on, get in there. Go on, oh, wrong way, Opal. Come on. Come on, let's go. Uh, this is a problem with these things. They go where they want, when they want. They gotta decide it's their idea. Come on, straight ahead. Come on. All right, I'm gonna put this phone down so I can work. Okay. Okay, so. We got the pig back in. Of course, like I said, she had to do it her way, but it got done. So, now I'm checking pants. Make sure that, make sure we don't have any grounds. We, I found a broke spot there. So, yeah. All right, so far we're not too bad. We haven't gone too far. Hope I don't find much because I gotta leave for work here in about 10 minutes. Whew, oh man. It's a crazy world we're in, huh? Uh, did y'all hear I don't know if I've mentioned it or not but have y'all heard or seen anything about this deal where somebody I think I hate to even blame it on but it might have been uh, the WEF World Economic Forum, or I don't know, but some of them climate change nuts say so anyway. What they said was that a backyard garden had a bigger carbon footprint than. A huge corporate farm and that can't be true uh, it does there's no way there's no way now a lot of these huge corporate farms are definitely efficient you know that's what that's all about growing food as efficiently and you know as possible and you know I define efficient as as much as you can as fast as you can and still have a quality product you know, that's my definition I don't know what Webster says about it, but that's how I look at it. So they're constantly looking for ways and and to to do it faster. And with less expense. God. 
but there's when you do that I don't care what you do it with there there has to be trade-offs so uh, yeah hold on okay so I had to stop and make sure my pinch charger was working uh, as I was saying these corporate farms trying to get everything done as efficiently as they can. As cheap as they can, as fast as they can, and as much as they can. I mean, that's how I define efficiency. It, it, that's a simple definition, I understand. But, uh, So sometimes, you know, and quality is a factor. There's always trade-offs. The higher quality, the slower you got to go. Um, it's just the way it is. And it usually costs more. So they're looking for cheap, fast, and a base level of quality. So, and that's why you see bigger hog houses, bigger chicken houses, more chicken houses, more hog houses, uh, the huge feed lots, the, uh, the huge tractors play on or working. They don't plow much anymore, but it all gets cultivated somehow, sometime. But you get bigger tractors. You know, my little old tractor here, I've got a disc for it. Disc is, I don't know, six feet wide. That's all that little tractor wants. Well, they got these discs and, and harrows and, you know, this 20, 30 feet wide. But anyway, there's your trade off. I mean, and because of these trade-offs and the expense, more and more people can't afford to get into farming on any kind of commercial scale, hardly. So, there's more and more land. When farmers get too old to, to operate at work, work the land, then they have to sell it. And when they do, it's too expensive because of land prices and, you know, other things. Younger farmers can't get into it. Unless they have a really good banker that, you know. But anyway, point is, there's no way when you factor in the, if, in a backyard garden, if you're just growing for yourself, you have if you use a rototiller, or a rototiller, however you want to say it, uh, you don't have, you, you have a little bit of fuel there. And the rest of it is physical labor. Hold on, I gotta get on the track. Okay, so as I was saying there, when you do your backyard garden, and I mean literally backyard garden, you don't have to ship that food anywhere. It doesn't get shipped across the country in a huge, you know, tractor trailer. Uh, it isn't stored before it gets to you. You know, it's not. You do the processing. I mean, like I said, the, the whole premise is flawed. It's just, I think, more propaganda to try to convince us as the average citizen to not be self-reliant. I mean, 
Don't learn how to grow your own vegetables. Don't learn how to raise your own meat, whether it be pigs, cows, chickens, whatever. They don't want you doing that. And I guarantee you, most of the regulations on farming isn't about your safety. Like, and this is my opinion, I think it's hold up, but it, it, it's about protecting the huge conglomerates that are in control of the food industry. And you know, it's like I've mentioned before, there's only, just look, just look at it beef production there's only like eight companies in the whole world that control something like 75 80 percent of the beef and that doesn't leave much room for anybody else uh, and they do it on such a volume and they the actual farmer that's growing the stuff for them has such a small margin uh, that it's just not good and, it, and it's prohibitive to people getting into it uh, I know back in the 70s this might be some weird video here I'm getting down off the tractor in grass and egress on this tractor wasn't thought out very well when they built it all right, I got it all shut down. So, anyway, there's no way, back to my point, there's no way that a backyard garden is going to have the carbon footprint that corporate farming does. All right, as you can probably notice, I'm in the truck. I'm running late getting to work now. Pigs in, fence jacked. Uh, just finished up a little rant on here about there being no way that a backyard garden has a larger carbon footprint than a corporate farm. So, yeah. Uh, still crazy in the world. I don't know how long this video is getting to be. But, uh, I hope that Like all my videos, I hope that it makes people think. I don't necessarily want you to assume I'm 100% correct. Go check things out. Uh, you know, this is just things filtered through my life experiences and my knowledge. And so, the, the things I read and, and watch... Our government is a mess, and I guarantee you, the uh, the people outside, well, even the people inside this country, that want a one-world government, they don't want it for our benefit. They want it for their benefit, or for well, what they think benefits them. <laughs> That's in more money, more power, you know, everything like that. So, just, I guess what I want to say is take everything you read or hear, whether it be from me or someone else, take it with a grain of salt. 
and you probably shouldn't be recording videos while you drive down the road. <laughs> that little odd bit of videography was me trying to keep my sandwich from falling in the floor. It's in a plastic bag, so I don't guess it really matters. So anyway, uh, without getting into a whole bunch of other stuff that's out there, you know, I guess I ought to just wrap this up. I hope uh, you found it entertaining, helpful, thought-provoking. Uh, so, yeah. And that's the point of my videos, get people to thinking. Uh, with the things that go on in the world, and, and if you support some of that stuff, you know, open borders and all that, you understand. I mean, I wait a minute, no, you don't understand. You're not looking at the complete picture. So, I'm starting to confuse even me, so I guess we ought to wrap this up, and we'll catch y'all later. Let's look out for each other. Let's help each other when we can, and for sure, let's pray.